Today, what we're gonna focus on is cutting a shag pixie. For me, it's a fringier edge along the pixie. It's not taken really tight but we're gonna take it tight within the interior and we're gonna disconnect and create some really fun shaggy layers on the top of the haircut. I hope you guys are excited about it like I am. Let's get started with the cut, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna start off sectioning. I wanted to do this with you guys because the sectioning is typically pretty simple with haircuts that I do, but for me today, it's just gonna be a little extra because I wanna separate all the different quadrants. It makes the haircut easier and it keeps you guys, keeps us nice and organized when we're working. So first things first, I'm gonna comb the hair directly back, just like that. And then I'm going to take a center parting straight down the center. Now I'm not worried about how far back I go because the first section I'm trying to make is a triangle right in the fringe area. You can look at the head shape and it's very simple to know where that hair wants to fall forward. So if you look at, you place your comb right on the forehead here and I tilt the comb back and forth, I can see where it rocks back. That's where I want to take that triangle section. So I go right in the front here, I find that point where it rocks and then I go from that point down to just the edge of the eyebrow. So right here, right to that edge of the eyebrow there, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'll comb this hair back, slide a clip up under just to separate it. So from that point, draw it straight down to the edge of the eyebrow. So that gives me a triangle right in the front of the head. And now I'm gonna comb my triangle straight up in the air. All right, twist that around. So that is our triangle section, just going back about two inches on the head shape. Now I wanna connect the parietal ridge. Comb the hair back and then I take it from that corner along the parietal. It's really low parietal. I wanna keep it right where the head pretty much stays flat here. And then I'm gonna work it around to the center back, right about mid crown. And after I take my parting, I will go through and just clean things up a little bit, make sure that they're nice. That'll keep me organized throughout the haircut. You can see that's Low parietal, I would say parietal ridge sits right about here. So just a little bit lower than that, keeps it on this flat angle here. So I know I'm working with the same kind of elevation and angles on this side of the head. And then I work that line all the way around to center back. And now I'm gonna do the same thing, continue that line around parietal ridge. And a little tip I like to use at this point is to hold my finger, my thumb right at the corner where I want to end this parting. So I'll keep my thumb there, I comb the hair over, and then I follow from this point in the back around and I just meet up with my thumb. And when I meet up with my thumb, I know that my line is exactly where I want it. So I turn the head, clean this line up a little bit in the back. And I'll twist it away and clip it. Pac-Man parting, we got the, uh, the mouth here and then a U shape around. We just broke it into two because we're gonna cut those two sections separate, but we've got our triangle in the front, which is gonna be our fringe area. The thing I like about creating that triangle in the front is that she could wear this either way. It's balanced right now with the amount of density and the amount of hair that I have in it. So really, if I wanted to cut a side swap bang this way, I could, or the other way, or a straight fringe, really I have a lot of options with that triangular section in the front. The last little bit that I'm gonna section down is straight down center back. And I don't really like to overcomplicate sectioning. This is more sectioning than I would normally do. I probably wouldn't section out the sides. I'd go through and cut it and I would just stay organized for myself. But for you guys and for a visual, I think it's good or if you're just starting out is to really section things away because it'll keep you organized and the more organized you are, the more consistent you'll be. So the last little bit that I wanna do here is I wanna separate the sides. So I go a little bit further back because I want to pretty much connect this line. This is something that since I had the chance to hang out with Sam Via a couple weeks ago, instead of going right directly above the ear, I go a little further back, which pretty much matches up this hairline. So the density here is all the same. That long bit. And then the density from this section all the way over stays the same as well. So I know what I'm working with as I'm working through. So just taking this section a little further back than you would gives you a better line to work with. 
I'm gonna clip the front away just like that. There's my back. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side and then we're ready to cut. Following down to the hairline, just meeting it up. All right, we're gonna start on the bottom right hand or bottom left hand side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split right through here. I'm gonna split at the occipital bone. So I'm gonna come through here and just draw a line straight over. So a nice slight diagonal forward horizontal line. I'm gonna bring this hair up and clip it away. So we'll slide this up underneath, hopefully you can see that. So now I've got a panel right here of hair. So now what I wanna do is I wanna push length over to the side of the head. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my section in my hand and I'm gonna pivot. I want to grab the hair at basically a horizontal slight diagonal forward and I'm gonna hold the hair and then I'm gonna shift it almost like we're creating a scooped or concave feel. And we're gonna do that by shifting our finger angle out, which is gonna give us the shortest point in the center and the longest point towards the outside, right? So here's the first line that we're creating. I take my first parting, which is a slight diagonal forward. I scoop the hair into my comb. I bring it into my hand like that. And then I shift and you could see I'm starting to lose that length's going away, it's disappearing, but I've still got all this interior length and now I go in and I cut short to long. So now we've got our short interior, long exterior, and I continue up the head that way. So I come out here, come over top. I bring that down to the previous, just slightly down. I shift my hand out and I come in here and I cut short to long. Again, nice short interior long exterior. And I'm gonna continue with a traveling guide up the head shape, shifting my hand out, cutting short to long. Now I'm working with more hair. So I recomb, and I'm gonna cut all the way across. This length doesn't matter. You, The longer the better, because we're gonna go through and cut this in the dry portion of the cut. So don't feel like that length needs to be exactly where you want it. So now I'm at the low crown area. I shift my hand back, but this is going to be the beginning of my stationary guide. And also notice my elevation here. My elevation stays up. I'm grabbing a new section. I'm keeping it straight out from the head. So there's been no weight buildup here in the head shape, but we're pushing that length off to the, uh, the outside. Now, as I move up this part of the head, as the head starts to curve away, and I'm getting into this point of the, the head, this is where I was cutting, keeping everything flat. Now when I shift and go into this panel, this is all now going to come down to that point. So a stationary guy bringing everything down to me. So I take this next section, still slight diagonal forward. Now I bring the hair, instead of coming straight out from the head, I bring it down to that stationary guide and I cut. So still keeping that length, still keeping it shorter, but now we're starting to build up a slight graduation in the back. That's gonna help with the side view, the profile view of the head shape. So still bringing everything down, cutting short to long, bringing everything over to me. So you can still see that length, you can see how long that is, but inside here, it's nice and short. All right, so same thing, so I take slight diagonal forward parting. And instead, now I'm gonna shift back like this. So now I've got the length in my fingers here and I cut up and I've got the longest point here at the tip of my finger and the shortest point in the interior of my hand. And I'll use some of that previously cut hair as a guide through. So I know I'm connecting both sides. So same thing, working over. Hardest thing about the right hand side is that now my elbow is up in the air. And when your elbow goes up in the air, your hand wants to drop. So a lot of people tend to end up with this side a little bit longer because they're not focused on how their elbow is dropping and how their arm is dropping down. So they start to build up more of a graduation early. So you want that to be consistent all the way through. So now we're getting to that low crown area. I'll do one more section straight out from the head, bringing that up to me, cutting across, connecting both sides, just like that. And now we move into our stationary guide. So now I'm bringing everything down. So notice my elevation every time is staying the same now. 
So now we've got all this extra length sitting on the outer perimeter of the cut. So now I want to move into the sides. The sides are pretty simple. We're going to work stationary for them as well. So I'll pull down the clip from the side here and I'm going to connect the piece from this side over to the front of the head. So I want a consistent line all the way across. So I'm going to bring this up just like this and I'm going to cut a short to long line right here on top of the head. Now, one thing I like to do is just kind of cut that bulk off first, then I go in and now I can easily cut my line here across the head. So I'm gonna bring that across here, cutting my line, just like that. Now I've got a nice short piece. I take another horizontal parting, comb that up to that stationary guide, and we're gonna cut that straight across. You can see, nice and short, pushing that weight down to the bottom. All this length here, this is definitely not pixie length at this point, but we will be cutting this hair. We'll be cutting into it um, at the very end. So we want that extra length. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So now all I'm thinking about is not only am I holding this hair up in the air, but where am I putting it? I want it right directly over the head. I'm also thinking about where is her head? Is it straight up and down? If her head is straight up and down, it's a lot easier for me to understand where I'm at because I know where her head is, if that makes sense. So I know where her head is now. I come across and I cut. I'm paying attention to what that elevation is. And obviously there's not really any over direction horizontally. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm just cutting a straight line across just like that. So now again, stationary guide's a little bit easier because I'll come across horizontally just like that with my line. And I bring this straight up. Now. If I'm not paying attention, I might end up bringing it here or wanting to bring it closer to myself because naturally you wanna pull things in. You don't wanna push things away. So I just keep focused on the last line that I cut and where I cut it. And that's where I bring the hair to. So just like that, bring it up and that's where I cut. And the last bit here, straight up. So you can see it's starting to look pretty shag-ish. All right, so the last little bit is these top sections here kind of working with a stationary guy we're going to travel for a couple steps so just like this comb the hair down i'm going to take a vertical parting here right down the head and i'm going to bring that back to me and there's my line and my guide from the back i'm going to bring it straight up from the head here and that's where i'm going to start to cut and i'm cutting straight across a nice straight line over and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk one more step up here and then when I get to this point, I'm gonna start my over direction back to a stationary guide. So one more like that, bringing that slightly back, got my guide, and then everything else is gonna come back to that point. And then the last bit, same thing, back to the stationary guide. There we go, push a little length to the front, which we're gonna mess around with later. For me, a lot of times cutting hair is pushing hair where you want to mess with it later, creating that movement and doing stuff with that length that you're pushing. For this section, I'm gonna take my guide from the opposite side here. I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna connect this side and the, the side of this. So the two sides coming together. Again, travel the first couple. I'm gonna pull a little bit from the opposite side, make sure that we're all aligned, traveling through. And now, stationary guide, bringing it back to that point. Over directing everything straight back here. So now, got that length, push it around. This front fringe area that we left out earlier, I'm actually gonna blow dry this, and then I'm gonna cut into that dry. Sam Via sent me a blow dryer, and I'm in love with this thing. It's lightweight, it's simple, there's not much to it. It's got grip, which is nice, and it's powerful. And then he sent me also a paddle brush. This thing has like bore bristles inside the bristles, so, a lot of tension, which I really like, and a lot of shine. So I'm gonna work the hair back and forth. So we're blow drying through. You can see those layers starting to pop on the top. So I'm just doing a flat wrap technique, pulling the hair back and forth throughout the head. I don't want any parting in the hair, and I'm just working the hair into its natural fall. Zero to three, 390. I won't go 400. All right, so I'm just going through the hair, just smoothing it out. I did the scalp to mid shaft already in the um, blow dry. So I don't really worry much about that, but I wanna smooth these ends just to give myself, obviously to start to kind of see the shape working. I like to smooth out all my haircuts 
because it allows me to see kind of the weight buildup and how that's working through. You can see how seamless these layers are because of the elevation that we had throughout the cut. So you'll notice when I take my sections, I work at a diagonal and then I comb the hair back into my hand just like I would cut it. And I hold it nice and tight with the tension and then I slide the iron in and I keep that tension in my fingers until I pull the iron through. That gives me less passes with the iron, so that means less damage and a smoother result because of the tension that I'm holding in my fingers. For that front triangle section that we left disconnected here, I'll go through diagonally this way, and then I'll make an X and cross over the other way, bring the hair over the other way. That way I'm not putting in a part. I don't want to have the hair forced in any direction. I'm gonna work this front fringe area first, and I'm gonna do a lot of slide cutting with this. The way slide cutting works is I'm gonna take pieces, I'm gonna pinch them in my fingers like this, and I'm gonna come over top and just slide down, half closing the scissor onto the hair. So I take pieces, and I look at how this is gonna live. I want this to be more of a shattered fringe, so I'm gonna go through here. I already have my layering in the top, so now all I have to do is just take that triangle section that we left out in the beginning and start to etch in that finished look and style that I want to create. So I just slide the scissor through here. This, I'm going to open up her eyes. I don't want to cover her eyes. So I'm just going to slowly start working towards that goal. You could also do the tease cutting technique. I'm not going to do that today because I want to softly slide in. I don't want to come underneath and cut too much. You can start to see it coming together a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to section off some of this front, some of the density in this cut. I like the, lay the length of these layers here, so I don't really want to cut into them too much. So now I'm going to lift the hair up here. And I'm just going to start to cut into it just with a slight elevation. So I lift it up with my scissor, and then I put the scissor in the blade about 45 degrees from the line, cutting line. What I'm really making sure of, where I think a lot of people get freaked out, is cutting too far over. I don't usually cut, especially my first initial cut, never goes past the edge of the eyebrow here. And then that way you ensure that you're not cutting in some sideburns into your client's haircut. So now I'm starting to open up the eyes. I'm doing it slowly because you can't put hair back on. I could just stamp in a section, but I want these to be textured looking. So I want to have that through there. So I just do it little by little. And when you let this down, that density comes back over, but you've got the length where you want it. And then you can go back in, cut into it a little bit. So now I'm going to come back to the fringe a little bit, but I want to start building the rest of the cut. I just wanted to get an idea of where we were at. So now comb some of this hair forward. We've got our lines that we cut on the top that was straight across. So I want to add some texture into that. So I bring the hair back to me just like this. And I'm going to cut into this line just to soften it, add a little bit of texture section across. This was what was over directed back. So notice I'm still pulling the hair exactly where I cut it when it was wet. So I'm not trying to change my lines at all. I want to have this short to long line here, but I just want it to be a little bit lighter and have texture. So same thing on the sides. I'm going to pull the sides up just like we cut it, just soften through. Same thing here, not changing the line, just cutting in some texture. All right. And the last little bit, this is the cloud whip. So it's a nice cream based product. It's got a slight hold, nothing strong. So I go through here, move around some of the texture in the hair. I want to see what the haircut's going to do first. And then I'm going to go through with my last tool, which is the twist razor. It's got a 100% cutting side, so that's what I'm going to use here. I slide through. I just want to break up some of these pieces. I actually really like the length. So I slide through and I just cut a little bit of the pieces just to add some separation. And you could even go shorter than this if you wanted to, but I'm... I'm actually really liking the uh, the current length of this with the layering on top. So let me spin it around so you guys can see. So a couple things that I want you guys to, to notice about this cut, that drop of our elevation in the back, you can see how it starts off nice and layered, hugs the head shape, and then builds out this shape here. I like to create that kind of line that extends into the chin line or the jaw line here. So you could see how that builds up. And then the roundness here, we push some weight into the front so it builds up here. All that over direction that we did throughout the haircut, that extended all of this length that you're seeing. But we still have these nice short pieces which make it a fun shag feel. Yeah, I'm really digging this haircut. It's kind of an evolution. So it's not super pixie-like, but it has definitely short 
uh, layers throughout it. And I just love the messiness of it. I think it's very trendy cut. So if you're looking for something to give your clients or even have those clients that are sitting with a real short bob, but they're looking for something new, this is a fun transition to take them into just to give them something a little bit more fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this cut. Make sure if you're on our YouTube channel, you subscribe because if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, anytime we go live, you get an alert. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.